Hey folks, Tivik here and welcome to part 4 of the Applied Energistics Mod Spotlight and Tutorial. In this episode, we are going to take a look at crafting. There are a few ways you can do crafting in this uh, mod, but we're gonna start with the one that is the manual method, but the basic one. For that, you're going to need an ME crafting terminal. These are crafted like this. You have a crafting table, a storage cell, an ME access terminal, some glass and iron. Now, let's hook this one up to the system somewhere. Uh, oh, we could just get one ME cable here and hook it up like so. Now this one will be able to see all items in your system. Now, let's say I put in the recipe for a furnace. Now, if I click on this, it will take out a furnace and use up eight. I can click again and again, and I can actually click until I'm out of cobblestone. You can click this one or space click to remove the items. You can do that with any type of item that you can craft. If there is not enough of some item, let's see... Um, let's craft chests. It will take out wood until it's out. Then it switches to the next type if there are other types. As you can see, yeah, I right clicked there to craft up everything. So, that's a cool thing. You can also, let's say we have uh, ladders, not ladders, we're gonna need sticks. Let's craft up, or just take a couple of stacks of sticks. 320. Now, if I find the ladder recipe, and if you have the uh, NEI installed, if you hit R to get the recipe, or you actually have to Oh, I can't do that in this mode here. If I hit R to get the recipe, I sh can shift click it onto this one. But now that I'm in creative mode, let's just go over to recipe mode real quick. R. No. Left click to get the recipe in uh, NEI. And then shift, left click on the question mark. Oh, and of course I need to be in this mode. There we go. And it put the recipe in. Now, this can be very useful. Like, for instance, if you want to make a trapdoor, you can shift click, but we don't have any of these, so unfortunately, I cannot. So, that's a very useful little crafting tool. Um, this is the first thing I recommend that you craft because it will speed up things some amazing amount, believe me. You will see that when you start using it. And of course, you can take out items out here. Don't worry, it works like a normal ME system. So you can use this one. Let's uh, go back to cheat mode and make sure it's noon. Can I turn off the rain? Yes. Now, the next item that you're going to need for the automated crafting, and this that you see here is all about the automated crafting. You will require a pattern encoder. The pattern encoder is crafted with a conversion matrix, iron ingots, and a crafting table. For this, you're also going to need blank... I think it's blank cell. No, blank pattern. These are crafted with a glowstone dust recipe, iron ingots, and glass. Now, this has a very cool feature as well. Just like this crafting terminal, you can shift-click on this one, and you get this onto the crafting uh, grid here. Now, in the top right, you put a set of blank patterns. You can put in up to 64, I think. Yeah, one stack. Now, if I click encode, this now knows how to craft the blank pattern. Well, this pattern knows. This pattern, if I'm not happy with it, I can shift right click to clear it. Let's put it back and encode it again, because we're going to need those. 
actually I can just create those but you get the point you can uh, take any item you can make a pickaxe a normal wooden pickaxe no shift click and code and it's a wooden pickaxe now what do you use these for well that's where the crafting system comes into place you have five blocks that you need to have well four blocks that you need but one block that is helpful and that is this it's a crafting monitor it is a fairly cheap recipe glass iron a basic processor and a cable this when hooked up to the system will tell you what is currently being crafted and you can cancel stuff and you'll see what you're missing this is useful for debugging and uh, to make sure that everything works as intended but of course to be using that in any way you're going to need an assembler containment wall heat vents pattern providers and crafting CPUs the pattern provider is required you will need at least one you don't need to have any crafting CPUs, but there are other limitations. So, let me clear this area up. We are going to grab from this a whole bunch of containment walls and a whole bunch of heat vents. I'm going to build the smallest, because this is a multi-structure. This is the smallest crafting unit you can build. All the sides, the corners, need to be containment walls. All the non-corners, which means mid parts here, need to be pattern pro sorry, heat vents. And that goes with this one as well. So heat vent, heat vent on there, and this top one there also needs to be. Remember? Corners, assembly, containment walls, edges, or non-corner sides, heat vents. And then you put the pattern provider in the middle and the containment wall. Oh, there we go. Did I get everything on? Looks like it. Now it needs power, so let's get some ME cables here. Um... I wonder why it didn't lock up. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> silly me. You saw that mistake, didn't you? And I did it again. There we go. Now it's looking like something. This is the molecular assembler chamber. Wow, that's a lot of words, isn't it? Right, but what does this do? It gives you the opportunity to craft items. So, I'm going to make sure that we have some planks in here. We have some sticks. Now, this pattern that we made for the pickaxe, we can put it in there. It turns into the symbol of the item that you're trying to craft, right? Now, if I go here, I can click craft and begin. It'll be very fast. A uh, standard crafting system crafts at a rate of one craft per three ticks. Okay? Th should be noted that each crafting CPU gives you one more operation every three ticks. So you can, if you expand this one, which we will do, put in... I'm gonna jump up here and add another layer. We can put in a crafting CPU here instead. Like this. And we need to... Oh. Need to close this up with heat vents. There we go. 
and it's now a little bit faster. It's also uh, good to notice that for each pattern provider that you put in, you will get another tab to work with. So you can have a lot of crafting recipes and believe me, you tend to get a lot of them as well. It's also noted that there can never be an air block in the middle here. If I try to close this up and hope that it'll turn into a multi-block structure, nothing will happen. Uh, you always need to have no air inside. Right. So you can put in a lot of stuff that usually takes a lot of time to craft. Let's say gears from forestry or build craft. And of course, I need to remember to... I'm pressing the wrong buttons today. Um, let's go with gears up to gold and diamond. Let's say that. Now if I put in these gears, you see we have wood, stone, iron, gold and diamond gears. So let's go into our system, add some... We have stone, but we need iron. We'll put in iron. We'll need gold. And we'll put in a few diamonds. Now, if I go to this here system and find these, I can click on, for instance, a diamond gear and say we'll want to make 10. Now, let's take a look at this here. It is crafting all the subcomponents. It's got nine left to go. It's currently crafting that and iron gear and ready. Now I think we have enough materials for this and you do see that it's not the fastest system so I'm cancelling it by shift clicking on that one. We got three diamond gears. Now let's expand this. Gonna make it a bit bigger. Did I show you the recipes with this? I didn't. I'll do that in a moment. Right, so let's make it uh, about that big. We'll make it like this. And the outer sides need to be containment walls. No, not that one. That one. It goes for that side as well. And that cannot be. The middle blocks also need to be heat vents. And remember, this cannot be just empty air. So let's get some crafting CPUs. Gonna need... Let's make three, four, and a pattern provider. And close it up. Plop. It's now a much bigger. Now, let's go here and tell it to craft 10 of those. You'll see it'll be a little bit faster. A lot faster, actually. Look at that. Look at it go. So this is the basic crafting system. It's not very basic. It's very advanced, actually. It will recognize that it can build the other items. You can switch between stored items and craftable. If you go to craftable, you will not see the amount that you have. So I can make 10 iron gears and 10 gold gears. And we have two jobs here that are going. And it will keep crafting until it's done or runs out of materials. It's got one iron gear and it's... Oh yeah, of course, it started using the iron gears as I was crafting them. It's probably not a good example, but... Here it goes, ticking along. 
And now that we also added another pattern provider, we have two tabs here. Right. So the recipes for these. The containment wall is expensive with four gold, four iron and a certus quartz. You can imagine that when you start building really large crafting chambers, you'll need a lot. The heat vent is iron bars to let the air through, ME cables and iron ingots. The pattern provider is also fairly expensive with a crafting table, advanced processor, two conversion matrix and a storage cell and of course iron ingots. And the CPU was crafted using Certus Quartz and an ME advanced processor with glowstone dust. But it doesn't end here. This is just the normal way that you do crafting. You will probably have one or two of these systems going in your base once you are started out with the mod. However, there are a few more cool things that you can do with the pattern encoder. I'm going to move it over here for the moment. We'll put it on top there. It doesn't have to follow a recipe. You can use this to, for instance, craft um, ingots. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little bit of an advanced thing here. We are going to need a few cool things, but we do have the basic thing here. We need an interface. We need an import bus. Actually, we'll use the precision one to make the speed a bit faster. This one is accepting from the top, okay? We'll also need some ME cable. Well, I'm using blue cable. I'll use the standard cable. There is a reason for colored cables. We'll get to that with subnetworks in a while. Um, now, this one, you remember the interface, you could put items in and get stored into the ME system, like so. But, let us get a copper, let's get some copper dust. Or actually, pulverized copper is probably the better one since we are using thermal expansion. If I go to this, no, to this one and tell it do something with pulverized copper and we will need one copper that I'm gonna need a thermal expansion one, there we go. One copper. Look at this. It crafts one copper ingot with one pulverized copper. Hmm, okay. If I now put that into the processing slots of the ME interface I can craft copper ingots, as long as I have pulverized. And if you look here, it sent the item into there, and it gets pulled out by the precision import. Look, a copper ingot! But, this is where the mod gets very, very flexible. Let's say, for instance, you have this one placed somewhere else. We can... Uh, I haven't actually set a power somewhere, but for the sake of things, I'll... Im let's imagine that it does not output here to the right side, but it outputs to... Oh, that side. So we get an interface plop and we get a import bus these two connect to each other so we don't need to worry on this one now we'll get some copper ore now this is probably not the way you will do it copper ore is turned into pulverized Oh. 
there we go, into two pulverized copper. And we tell this system, hey, this is how you craft pulverized copper. So let's get some pulverized copper. Oh wait, we don't have the ore. Now this one will tell us that we are missing copper ore. Let's create a bunch of it. And now that is sent into the pulverizer, which is then exported into the system. And we have pulverized copper. Cool, huh? Yeah, I thought so. Now, here's a cool thing. If I don't have any pulverized copper, but I need ingots. I'm telling it to craft 10 ingots. It is now crafting pulverized copper first by sending that into... Oh, and we are getting some excess stuff as well, so I'm going to do that. It is now pulverizing ore to be able to craft up the copper that I'm asking for. This is a very neat thing. What you can also do is set up an automated system that exports, say, copper ore into a pulverizer, and the pulverizer is then made so that any pulverized stuff is put into the powered furnace and is exported into the system. That is a very neat little system, and it's uh, automated smelting when it's at the best. So, what more can we do? You can, for instance, make a recipe for glass. We need glass, we need sand. Let's get a whole bunch of it. Let's uh, clear this, make a pattern for it, put it in here, put a bunch of that in, and let's say we want 64 glass. It's now crafting that. And of course, it takes time, of course, because, well, glass takes time to smelt. But we are getting glass. That's just one of the ways that you can use this system and uh, get some cool uh, effects out of it. But it doesn't really stop here. This is just the basics of this mod. So, what I'm going to do, now that we've gone through the tutorial part of the absolute basics, I'm gonna show you some cool stuff with builds that you can do. And uh, that is going to be in different episodes, uh, maybe a few builds per episode, but um, as I find cool stuff, I will record it and post it up for you. Please let me know if there's something that you would like to see, some kind of a build, uh, anything that might help you out in the world of Minecraft. So, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and mod spotlight for Applied Energistics. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.